Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today I have an opportunity to work on an oldie, but a goodie. It's one of uh, the set of reels that Joshua sent in. I guess they belong to his dad, and I kind of have a fond spot in my heart for this one because it's one of the first uh, low-profile bait casters that I had purchased personally. Uh, it goes back, I guess, to the late 70s, maybe early 80s. This one is the Daiwa Procaster. It's the PMA 10S. And uh, we're going to show you how to take this apart, how to service it, and how to get it back to Joshua so he can take it fishing again. There's a lot of dirt on it. The uh, reel does work. It's missing a badge on the side. But otherwise, mechanically, we should be able to restore this and keep it fishing for a long time to come, giving it a second chance. Well, before I get started, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use that notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos. And I work on all kinds of reels, so uh, you'll see videos like this on low profile reels one day, and you'll see an ocean reel the next, and then maybe you'll see a spin fishing reel the following day. So uh, it's kind of an eclectic uh, bunch, whatever comes into my shop and gets serviced. For the most part, I try to do videos on. And if you like these types of things, if you like the art of reel repair, if you uh, enjoy seeing how reels are made, learning a little bit about their history and manufacture, well, I would encourage you to subscribe. Well, we start by taking off the exterior parts. We took off the, the nut cap and we took off the retaining screw. And when I take my pieces and parts off, I put them into a parts tray. That one's the bottom of a plastic uh, food tray. And uh, we'll remove the 10 millimeter nut that holds the hand on. And underneath that, there's a little E-clip right on the, the uh, stud here. You want to take that off as well. That's holding the gear shaft to the uh, bridge post. And be careful when you take these off. They have a tendency to shoot. Underneath that little clip is a little retaining washer. Make sure you put both of those aside in a safe place. We're going to remove our handle now. It's a good place to tell you to take pictures if you don't know the reel you're working on. Maybe even if you do and uh, just want something to fall back on in case you, uh, you lose a part, forget a part, whatever. Uh, take the pictures at critical junctures. That way it'll show you orientations of pieces and parts that you've removed. And well, when it's time to go put them back together again, it kind of makes it a little bit easy. We took the tension washer that goes between the handle and the star adjuster off. Now we're removing the star adjuster. This one's interesting. It's got a very big back end of this to press down on the drag washers. This comes off in a counterclockwise manner. And when you do your, your reel repair and reel servicing, you like to inspect all the pieces and parts, make sure that they're in good condition, uh, that there's nothing broken, chipped, cracked, etc. Next off, we want to take the two spring, uh, the two screws, the thumb screws. They're holding the case onto the frame. Once you crack the screw, you can generally remove them by hand, and you should be able to remove the case at this point. Underneath that, we have the spool. You want to remove the spool. The spool has got the magnetic uh, collar underneath it. Just check the assembly. It looks like a bushing in there. It is a bushing in there. So you really don't have to service that, but we do want to clean that. When we have the spool out, that's a great opportunity to get in there get all the dirt out. To do that, I like to just flush it with some penetrating oil. That helps loosen the greases. And then I like to use a cotton swab. I'm just go in there and kind of do mop up duty. Get all that old dirt and the like while it's open. If you try working around the spool, you'll kind of never get there. So this is a good time to do that. There's also going to be some dirt on this side, but we'll clean that when we go over to service that side plate. And we want to get the other side here as well. Okay, 
That's a pretty good cleanup. I'll just use a paper towel here to mop up any of the excess that's on there. And while we have the case open and I'm not working around that spool too much, we're going to take a moment to service the pole here. Now I noticed uh, Joshua sent two reels in. One of them has a skipping pole. And uh, that's going to be an issue. I'm not sure if it's the uh, worm gear that's causing the issue or the pole. I'm going to have to test that one in a moment when I do the other reel. All right, generally if you tap down on that, you can get the pole out. It sits a little proud. I'm going to just use the flat blade of a utility knife to pull that out of that. Then once I have enough to grab it with the micro pliers, I'm going to do that next. You want to make sure that the pole is clean. In this case, it's pretty dirty. Let's go ahead and see if we can't mop it off with the cotton swab. That's not working. I'm going to use a scraper here, the side of that utility knife to scrape away the dirt. You can see it's got old grease on it. It just chunks right up there. That's definitely impacting the performance of this one. And uh, we may find out that that's happening with the other. While you have the worm gear and assembly off, take that uh, paper towel of yours, wipe it down. Try to inspect that as well. There's a little bit of dirt on this. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to flush this with a penetrating towel. I'm going to use a corner of the paper towel to hold on to the worm gear and then I'm going to turn the worm gear by hand and that will enable me to get the old greases off of there. So that's the old grease that was on that, that drive. Alright, before I go any further there I'm going to put a spot of uh, oil into it. Take my pliers Reinsert the pinion gear, or pinion gear, reinsert the pole. Then as you're centering it to get it down, turn your handle, or what would be the handle for the worm drive, so that you can make sure it's moving properly. Then go ahead and put that cap back on. All right, that's the case side. Now we'll get to the business end of the reel. Make sure that that cap goes on square. This one's not going on square. Now it is. If it doesn't go on square, stop. A lot of these caps are plastic caps. If you don't do that right, you're going to find that the cap starts to, to split, and then you're in trouble. All right, so we have the Magnetic brake, just a little bit of grease onto the stud that's going into the bushing. We can reinsert this now. And we can just set that frame aside. This is the business end of the caster. To get this side case off now, there are two small screws. And this is a good place to, to take some pictures now because you're going to want to know how the uh, insides look before you get started taking pieces off of it. And while I'm doing that, I want to encourage you to ask questions. If you're working on a reel maybe and you lost your way or you have a little bit of a question about a particular setup or design or something, you can leave it in the comment section of this video or any video that you're watching. It doesn't have to be about the particular reel you have a question on. And I'll try and help you if I can. All right, the screws pop the side case off, and it doesn't matter what order you do things, but I'm noticing there's a lot of film and the like on that side case, so I'm going to grab my rod and reel cleaner right now, and a kitchen scrubby, I'm just going to go on there and see if I can't work that off. So one of our viewers the other day was telling me, if you have yellowing on a... Uh, uh, a fishing reel, particularly the graphite reels, if you use peroxide and a yellow light, you kind of reverse the process. It says it's uh, something they've been using to restore video game consoles and the like. I'm not familiar with that. This one's a metal case, but uh, next one up that I find that has some pretty severe UV damage on it, I think I'm going to give it a try. Gotta go find that black light.
It also said you can leave it out in the sun if you don't have uh, a black light, but we'll see what we can do. The inside of this case is clean. I'm just going to wipe it down with a paper towel. There's nothing that's accumulated there. We have a, uh, a bushing where that spool uh, axle shaft is going to seat. This is the inside of your Procaster then, and it's a place you want to take pictures, particularly when you start to see things like the screw, uh, the spring setups here on that uh, release, also the springs on the yoke, the drive for your uh, worm gear, and so on. Well, I'm going to remove these two springs that hold the yoke in right away because those things tend to shoot. We can pull the whole assembly up now on this because we removed the E clip. Uh, we could, but we've got the going to take that off to the side. That's your worm drive gear. That's why a picture would help things sometimes fall out even when you don't want them to. Now we'll remove that whole assembly and you notice that we have the anti-reverse dog is on the assembly as well. Then I'm going to remove the yoke and we got a little bit of cleanup to do here. I'm going to leave that um, free spool yoke assembly in place a lot of springs on it. You don't need to necessarily do it if you can clean around it. So that's probably the better part of trying to do this right now. You also have a very small spring here. Notice that. It hooks on here and on the bottom end of that trip release lever. And we'll do a nice clean up on this. Now if this was caked with dried grease and you had to get underneath there, go ahead and take it off. In this case, I don't see the issue there, so we're just going to do our best to get what little dried grease there is, there is on the case cleaned. Next up, we're going to remove the pinion gear. Now I got it right, it's the pinion gear, it's not the, uh, the other piece that I referred to as a pinion gear, being the pole. There's some old grease on the shoulders of that. We use a pick to clean that up. And there's grease on the shoulder here. Let's get that off and out of the way. That's a plastic piece. When you take your pinion gear out, inspect that. Make sure all those teeth are clean and that they're uniform and that they're not chipped, broken, or cracked. Well, here's a place where a lot of folks do get confused. So you have the gear is out now. You have the yoke is out. And you start to wonder, well, gee, which way was what? In this case, you're only going to be successful one way because this tag end is shorter than the others. But a lot of times it'll be centered and it's easy to install it backwards. So you want to look at two things. There's a ramp on the back of this one that's going to face in. That's where these prongs are going to push down on it. And there's also a cavity to accept the spring. So this is the front side. With the gear, the slotted side goes in because that's going to accept the spool. So that's how this piece goes back on, just like that. Okay, we got the main gear and the anti-reverse dog. Let's go ahead. You have the main gear and a tension washer. You have two tension washers. And we can pull that assembly off. Underneath the main gear, there is a washer. And then there is the click ratchet for your anti-reverse dog. We can take this assembly and reinstall that once we clean the axle shaft of the old grease or the bridge post. All things, different things from time to time. We can go ahead and put this back on. And if you didn't have a picture, this is how it goes, just like that. So this works by friction. When you're turning your reel, it's going to release that dog. And as you go to stop the reel, it's going to pull the dog back in. Okay, those are the two pieces there. I'm going to take a little pick and push the washer assembly through on the other side. And we have one washer in here. It appears to be a fabric washer. Take a look. It is a fabric washer. It's like a leather washer. It looks like it's been sitting on there a while. So what I'm going to do is take a 
piece of steel wall. Just get the, the old debris off of there. That looks like tarnish now. Do the same thing here. Check all of your teeth on the gear. Make sure that they're clean. If they're not clean, go ahead and get a hard brush and pull through that to clear the channels. In this case, this one's clean. And we're going to just come ahead and re-grease. So when I was testing this reel, there was a little bit of complaining going on, and I would say that was a matter of the grease. And I think when we saw the, the dried grease on the, the line assembly pawl, that's probably was doing its fair share of talking to. Alright, we can put the main gear back on, and we want to make sure that we engage that with the pinion gear. We've got a, a washer here that's a fabric or a leather washer, and what we want to do on that case is put grease on it. You want to do that because it's a porous washer. Porous washers will absorb grease and it will keep them flexible. Don't put too much grease on because you're only going to squeeze it out. So if you put some grease on and it seems like it's just a big old glob in there, well then wipe the excess off. Make sure that your uh, metal washer is clean, it's not pitted. And then go to your pictures if you need to. The next one up was a little brass flat washer. Then we have two washers that appear to be bent washers. That's intentional. Don't try to unbend them. I put the the bowl or the uh, the outer edges with the curve going down up first and then down second. Those are for the sensitivity of the star adjuster. And then the plastic collar goes on. Well, I think in this case, what they want you to do is they want you to put this on next because this wheel goes through the hole here and the line. So let's go put that back on next. And we have this trip assembly here. You're going to notice that there's a kind of a nail spike sitting out. And in this case, the arm has a hole in it. So when you go to install, you need to put that peg into that hole while you're doing everything else. So line the case points up. And then make sure it seats nice and flush all the way around the case. Now we have our, our plastic or our Teflon piece here. Teflon piece is, well, I guess I got to take that post off first, or at least raise it up a little bit. There's a lip on the back of the, the piece here that needs to clear. And then it needs to sit, it's on a, uh, there's a rectangle piece there. And then just check, make sure that it works before you go any further right now. Turn the wheel. Everything seems to be working the way it should. Okay. Next up then, we want to get those two springs that we put into our tray and put those into the cavities on your, your yoke. Now we can take our side plate and we can align that. We want to push down evenly on the side plate and these two holes are going to fit over that spring there's also a little stud here for this piece. Oh, it's right there. You don't want to trap that spring in the uh, side plate. So make sure when you're doing this that you're clear of that. And then go ahead and get those little screws that I don't play well with. I'm just going to get a micro screwdriver here because it is a small piece. I'm going to put, dip that into some grease to use as a piece of glue if you will. Set that into the screw and hopefully that will give me enough holding power to get that screw started. There we go. An alternative could be that you take that side plate screw, there's two of those, remember the big ones, and uh, you could screw that in at that point if you wanted to. 
Okay, the two side plate screws are in. Now we can tighten up the ones that are going to hold the side plate to the frame. We'll do another quarter turn on this just to make sure it's snug. And we would like to do the star adjuster next. Make sure that uh, you're patient as you go put the star adjuster in. One of the issues that you can have very easily with these is cross-threading it. So I've got that spinning right now. I'm just going to use my pliers on the flat side, not the threaded side, but there's a flat side on these posts. Okay, just finishing up tightening that. Now I'm grabbing it by the shoulder. I don't want to damage the threads of that shaft. I guess this thing hasn't been used in quite some time. And if you get enough clearance, you can put your handle on and use that as a wrench to hold the shaft in place while you continue to tighten down. There we go. Now it's starting to smooth up a little bit. Very good. Next up then, you want to remove that handle, put your little tension washer on, then the handle goes on. Now we're looking for that little washer. And the clip. I prefer to put these on now rather than after the nut has been installed. The nut will fit over these. And again, be careful, these things have tension, they're spring clips. They can shoot pretty easily. And they're small and they're hard to find. Okay, we've got that set now. Now I can take the handle nut. And again, do your best to start these by hand. That way you're, you're sure you're not cross stripping it. Once it's on, tighten it up, and you want to align either the flat part on the perpendicular or you want to align the point of the, the nut with the hole here. And that generally results in good alignment of that cap. So that cap and that screw spotter are open and in the same position right now. That makes it easy to put the tie down screw in. So what have we done so far? Well, we've taken the reel completely apart. Well, almost completely apart. We left the, uh, the one piece with all the springs in there. We made sure we cleaned it all. Now we're going to oil the seams of the handles. We uh, took the line guide assembly off. We cleaned the pawl. We showed you how to scrape the, uh, the excess grease off of the, uh, the worm drive. How to disassemble the side plate and clean it up using that rod and reel cleaner. We're ready to give it a test now. Okay, let's give it the final test then. Turns nice and easy. Yeah, this is still a little noise, not what it was, but it's that Teflon gear intersecting with the main gear. Turns nice and easy and smooth. Let's make sure that our autocast works. Clicks back nice and easily. Free spool. There you go. So that's it. That's your Daiwa Procaster PMA 10S. We have the mag adjuster on this. It's hard to say where that mag adjuster is in the process. Let's turn it one way. Put the cast on. Turn it the other way. Give it a spool. Okay, so it's at the minimum. So you have minimum and max, and what they suggest on a Procaster is to set it to the middle, or any mag for that reason. And there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you've done to keep us safe. To everyone, enjoy the art of real repair. Make sure you take time to go fishing and bring a friend when you do. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.